Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. Welcome to The View from the Afternoon. Today, we're absolutely buzzing. We have a very special guest. It's the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Melvin Ben. Melvin, thanks so much for jumping on with us today. We really appreciate it. Oh, sorry, Mao's way, yes. Um, <laughs> a true um, professional. <laughs> indeed, no. <laughs> um, I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me um, uh, on, on what seems to be a video podcast that I didn't know existed. I did. I thought that there was a different term for that, but anyway. Well, there's an, or, I ch- there's an audio. I challenge you to find that term. Well, we've got a bit of homework. <laughs> yeah. We've got some homework already. Um, so Melvin, um, we obviously know who you are, we've, um, we've kind of done this before, but we've grown substantially since we last spoke. Um, so why don't you do a bit of an intro? Why don't you tell the people out there who you are, what you do and what we're going to talk about? Um, okay. My name's Melvin Ben. Um, I am a festival prom- promoter and producer. I'm the managing director of Festival Republic, uh, I have quite a number of festivals in the UK, Ireland and uh, Germany, uh, uh, one of which is uh, Leeds Festival, the very amazing Leeds Festival that takes place at the August Bank Holiday weekend, um, uh, which I started in 1999. Um, uh, If I was able to count, I would tell you what edition this one is in 2021, but I'm not. Um, not least because we had to miss an edition due to COVID last year. Uh, And so we are excitedly planning and thinking about and looking forward to Leeds Festival in 2021. And I guess that's what we are going to chat about. Amazing. And Reading Festival. There's a big, there's a big one that you missed out there. Leeds and Reading. <laughs> but Leeds well, is Reading as well, of course, obviously. Yeah. Reading as well, of course. So nice to just be able to talk about festivals again in a in a in a non kind of remembrance kind of way. Like it seems like everything we've spoke about is like, oh, remember festivals, remember how good it was, and yeah. now we can actually look forward to. <laughs> right, to, we're, we're going to do this this time. Yeah, this yeah, is going to. We did. We did that last time. We're actually going to do it this time. <laughs> And we went to Reading last year for the first time and it was it was a, a great experience. Really surreal seeing such a... Well, obviously we've never been, but it was so familiar yeah, <laughs> because yeah. we've been to Leeds yeah, for 10 busy. years. That's, that's pretty odd because she must have been the only three there. There wasn't anything happening last year. Not last year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all right, Melvin, all right. Go, I don't actually know what what surreal of you three in a field in Reading <laughs> actually is. It's probably best not to talk about it. Yeah, we yeah. keep that between us, yeah, it's under wraps. Though. We needed to produce some content. It was a slow year, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Uh, but yeah, cheers for jumping on. Last time we, we spoke, you came, uh, we, we did it in person and we were in our... Uh, dilapidated six month rental in, in Burley Road and you know you were a great guest and I appreciate that you you know you came around and kind of put up with the <laughs> the car in there and that was not ideal for any of us but we've we've stepped up a bit in the world we got microphones now there's no yeah. handheld iPhones so um yeah you, know. you have a skyline as well actually by the looks of it yeah well, with a with a title view from the afternoon you've you've got to have a view at the end of the <laughs> yeah, day yeah we do <laughs> um Cool, yeah, but th- thanks for jumping on. Let's um, let's let's dig in. Um, Melvin, how's the, how's the past year been for you? Um, I guess I guess both both personally um, and and com- company wise. Um, what have you, generally what have you been up to? Um, and what have you been up to with Festival Republic then? Well, I, I guess in truth, it's been a. I mean, it's been a, a desperate year. If I'm being really honest with you, and um, y- y- you know, I. Uh, in, in in sort of relatively simple terms, uh, you, you know, I, you know, my life is consumed with, um, you know, producing festivals and promoting festivals, and um, and I, I've done that pretty solidly, on and off since 1979, and um, it, you know, COVID just stopped us in our tracks, and uh, and that you know that really was. Um, uh, you, you know, just beyond difficult to deal with in some respects, and you know, obviously, you, you know, we uh, end up having to, uh, you know, furlough people, you know, make some people um, redundant, um, you know, to try and keep the company sort of, you know, in a decent shape to be able to go forward when we're able to go forward. So, you know, there have, you know, there's been, 
you know, individual and staff casualties as well as, you know, festival casualties in that sense of it. And, and that's disappointing. It's, it's massively disappointing because, you know, people that have worked for me for, you know, many years, um, you, you know, we, you know, we had to let go as part of a, you know, reshaping for the future in that sense. So, you know, pretty tragic um, in, in that sense. And I guess, um, it, you know, that's when, you know, people, you know, talk about, you know, the loss of a festival in a way, but the loss of a festival or all festivals also come down to, you know, sort of, you know, personal loss for people. Sometimes it might be jobs, sometimes it might just be um, the ability to, you know, express themselves and go out and, you know, really have a, a you know, sort of a, a press the release button a little bit on what is their ordinary life or their usual life. And uh, so, um, it, you know, it, 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 there's lots of, uh, you know, personal, you know, toughness about the year that we've had. But, you, you know, we do also ha always have to, um, you know, keep it in, you know, the perspective of, you, you, you know, we haven't had, you know, bombs dropping on our head and all that sort of stuff. You know, we, we you know, we've had... Um, you know, relatives and neighbours and friends, you know, die because of COVID. Um, and, uh, you know, but we have had what is in effect an incredible NHS and an incredible uh, scientific community sort of trying to keep us going. And and, and by and large, there, you know, obviously there's a, a lot of deaths, 125,000 people died in the UK. But, you know, by and large, you, you know, as, as tough as it is, you constantly looking at those those people, you know, within the NHS, for example, and thinking, you know, God, it must have been tough for them. You know, it must have been really difficult for them. And, you know, we'll forever have, you know, a, a, a sort of admiration for them of what they've done, really. And, um, yeah, really tough, actually. Yeah. Um, what's What's been keeping you busy personally? Um, I imagine I imagine that with the festival not going going ahead last year. Um, it's has it given you much free time? What have you been filling your time with? Well, I, ironically, I would say I've been busier, effectively busier producing nothing uh, <laughs> than I have producing something. Um, and and because it, you're constantly trying to, um, it, you, you know, particularly myself, I've been constantly trying to work ways through of yeah. being able to get open in in a, a, a sort of covid environment but get open safely yeah um and you know so i've spent a huge amount of time uh developing what you know what was a, a you know i published out in june last year a called a full capacity plan i remember this um hmm. about about how we could um uh you know get open by you know testing people and or um validating a, a vaccination um and it's fair to say, you, you know, I, I was the only one shouting about that in, in June of last year. Um, and it, 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 it's reasonable that nobody else was shouting about it, I guess, because nobody really was quite ready for it because we we're in the middle of the, um, you know, we were in the middle of the uh, the battle at that point to sort of try and keep people alive. So that that, that was the focus, that was the priority. And, and as time's gone on, um, you know, government and and... and um, you know, public institutions have begun to be a bit more interested in that. And, um, you, you know, I think it's fair to say now that, um, you, you know, the European Union are going to bring out a, uh, a health passport, which is essentially what I was, um, you, you know, suggesting in June last year. Um, uh, you, you know, a number of countries are, you know, going to want to introduce it for travel. Um, uh, and, um, I, I, I've, you know, continued on that single path of, of, of trying to develop a system and a plan that allows me to effectively get, you know, 85,000 people in a field um, in a, 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 a sort of relatively COVID safe environment. Um, and in particular, what, that hap what happens there is that I have to create a plan that says to the public authorities that by having, let's say, Leeds Festival or Reading Festival, um, that what I won't do is increase the amount of infection 
mm. and or the amount of hospitalization and or the amount of deaths um, as a result of having the festival compared to not having the festival. Um, that's a, that's and a I've, point. Yeah, and I, I've, I've been, you know, I've got to know, you know, scientists that use words that I didn't even know existed before. <laughs> um, and I've got to know professors and I've got to know, um, you, you know, people who actually are part and parcel of the bedrock of our society who are usually unseen and unheard of, um, but actually do this incredible work behind the scenes to allow us to mess about in the way that we mess about and, um, you know, have fun in a field type of stuff in a way. So um, it, it's actually been a joy getting to know those, the, you know, those people. Um, and I, I'm now in a position where uh, actually just today Imperial College have, um, you know, put out a paper um, saying that uh, this is the route forward, this is how we should be uh, going forward. Um, uh, the Journal of, of, of the Royal Society of Medicine have um, put out a thought piece uh, literally just today. Um, it, it goes up on their website tomorrow um, about, uh, you know, the health passport and the what was effectively the, the full capacity plan that I published in June um, is is actually the way forward, and uh, so, the, so they've kind of they've kind of plagiarised that idea from you, then Melvin, a bit that health passport idea by the sounds of it. They've been they've been nabbing that from 100%, you. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, 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 I uh, yeah, I should have a royalty on everyone that she yeah. but I haven't. Actually. You're just doing your bit no, to get the... a man of the people, Melvin. I. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I think it's fairly safe to say then that throughout all this, you've been pretty busy then, really, <laughs> considering all. I, I, I literally haven't had a day off. I mean, I do. I have not had a day off. Um, well, I suppose in, in uh, some way um, that's 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 quite good then, actually, because it's you know you're still keeping in that. Obviously, you're not working towards the same thing. You know, you're not working towards the you know the end result of like Leeds festivals and all like that. But you're still kind of keeping going, and you're not just slumping in a chair watching. Yeah, home, but at the same time, or something like that all day. <laughs> I'm very pleased to say that I don't know what that is, but it doesn't sound like it would be on my viewing list. I've never seen um, that. But me, me and Raz do recommend it. It's very good. <laughs> I can't be part of that. Um, no, I guess, um, I, it, yeah, I mean, I have been that busy and it is literally, uh, you know, I, I sit on Zoom calls from, um, you, you know, eight in the morning till six, seven, eight o'clock at night and... You know that's really tough. Um, you, you know, without that sort of personal contact with people, it's really it is actually really tough. It's, um, yeah. And uh, you, you know, but it, it it's not the same. It, you know, it, it, you are equally busy, if not more busy. But it's much more difficult if you can't see an end point. Of course. And uh, it, you know that that's draining, really. I think I think one thing that's been like getting us, us through all this as of recent, especially in this like lockdown three or whatever you call whatever you want to call it now, um, is that now that we are we have an end point um, and that we there is light at the end of the tunnel. I hate those phrases, by the way. I oh, know I'm the, sick the of it. at the end of the tunnel. I've said it a million the, times yeah. myself, but yeah. Um, interested to know what like you, you said. You, so you've done you've obviously done, done a load of work in the past year, but. But what options have you have you been through then to try and to try and make it happen last year and anything that you're currently looking at for this year? Yeah, is the is the only is the only option for for Reading and Leeds and the other gigs that you're involved in the standard model, or have you kind of considered like, I mean, we kind of discussed why we can't see it happening a socially distanced version or something like that. But has that has that come on the table? Have you what have you considered? No, I I I, I, I was clear from day one that. Um, uh, that um, it, we uh, anything socially distanced is not is not for me. Um, it's not what I do. Mm. It, it's not what I create. Um, it's a, uh, it's a it, subpar it, experience, it, isn't it? That you're bound to have there. Yeah, I mean, e economically it doesn't work. But even if economically it did work, I, I, it just the, the atmosphere just wouldn't be the same. I mean, yeah. it just couldn't be the same. And and. You know, I I know what I love. I think I know what you know the festival fans love, and I, I I'm, I've been I, I've been blinkered and singularly focused on that. I wouldn't entertain anything with any social distancing because 
my view was that the moment you were doing that, you were allowing the government off the hook a little bit um, and allowing them to think, oh, yeah, you know, music's back on and, you know, people are having fun and all that. But they're not. They're having no fun if you can't jump up and down and hug the person Too next right, to you. Yeah. you Too know. right. So, it, you know, that, it's that simple, really. Was there any worries at any point, you know, in terms of, you know, Festival Republic itself or, you know, because obviously the music industry itself was hit fairly badly. Was there any worries about, about you know, com- coming out of out of this? You know, was there a point where you went, oh God, <laughs> I'm a bit worried here. No, in, in fairness, I, 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 I wasn't. And I, I, I wasn't because... Um, I wasn't because I was meeting really bright people all of the time that were trying to help me come up with solutions. And, and, and you know, to give you the, 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 the context of now, um, if you added up every brilliant scientist that's created everything that we take for granted, you, you know, that you know, air travel, you know, boat travel, you know, machine guns, fucking traveling up to space and, you know... (laughs) Never thought they'd been the same. Just, just, you know, just... Some of your favorite things. But everything, everything that you could ever sort of imagine, what is, you know, all the scientists that have contributed to our life up until now, there are more scientists alive and working now at this point in time, this week, than if you cumulatively added all of those people together. And and what that said to me is that they'll find a solution. They will come up with a solution. And 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 the lady, you know, the lady that, you know, that 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 effectively, you know, developed the you know the um, Oxford AstraZeneca jab, I mean she's been working on what is effectively the prototype for that jab, I think for 11 or 12 years. Um, and, and the only bit, she, she needed to finish the last 10% of it. Um, and, and actually, in normal circumstances, that last 10% might have taken five more years to, to, to mm-hmm. come through. But because everybody pulled together, it allowed her and her team, obviously, to get it together in a few months, effectively. And... Mm-hmm. And, and and so no, I never gave up. I never gave up because I trusted in what were effectively incredibly bright and well-educated people that were going to get us out of this, really. Science was always the thing that was going to get us out of it. I think the the interesting thing was it was... Uh, and, you know, we can talk... We could talk for hours about what went well and what went badly in terms of the government's response to COVID and reaction to COVID, but... Somewhere, someone very early on um, got into Boris's ear and said, the only thing that's going to get you out of this, Boris, is a vaccine. Mm, And that very clearly uh, sunk in with him. And for everything else that was going on, he has almost been as singularly focused on that vaccine um, uh, and getting that out. And um, it looks like that piece of advice that he got and took um, will pay dividends and, and will allow us to get open. Absolutely. I mean, it, uh, you know, in the group chat, we're always, you know, every day it seems to be, we're talking about, oh, did you know, you know, you know, another 5 million has been, been vaccinated today. You know, we were always talking yeah. about it. And, and obviously yeah. there was a point where we're like, oh, we're, we're ages away now. But, you know, with the way they're rolling them out, it's got, you know, we're, we're, we're feeling optimistic. You know, we're feeling great. No, it's fantastic. And, 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 and again, everybody... You know, everybody says to me, well, you, you, you know, um, you, you know, this is all great, Melvin, but, you know, young people won't get the vaccine. And it's like, well, actually, all the young people that keep emailing me tell me that they'll get as many vaccines as the, as is required if it means they're going to get into Leeds and Reading. Too right. And just, they, they, they're saying to me, I, I don't, don't, don't mind how long the queue is, Melvin, just... Tell me where the queue starts. Yeah, I'm this... getting in it. I'll wait and wait. I just want to go to Leeds and Reading. If you have to, I, I, I... Like if, if you have to, if you have to inject me with something to get in, Melvin, 
I think I speak <laughs> with people around the world where I say, I'll, I'll, I'll do it, mate. I, I, need, I, need, I know, I know. <laughs> I was about to say, you know, know, I'll say it anyway. I need my fix of live music, <laughs> of live music. That's what I need. What? No, indeed. And it, it, I mean, I guess, you know, the, I mean, and that's the thing in a way. And, and I, 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 you know, we, I was just... Um, uh, I, I, you know, I was just talking about it last night, and I, I have a. I, I, I usually, I mean, I know this is, would be hard to believe that, but you, you know, outside of COVID, I would play football every Thursday night. Um, I remember you know, five, six, seven aside, and 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 I still do. And we we have a. Oh, good um, in the absence of that, we in the absence of that, we've been having a a sort of Thursday night football banter. Uh, um, um, uh, you know, Zoom call every week with <laughs> with somebody that's capable of setting it up. Obviously, do you still and, have your um, um, do you still have your two pints when you're when you're on that call? We 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 either have two pints or we have a, a glass of wine or something um, or something of that sort. So we we do effectively still have those two <laughs> pints. Um, and um, so um, and I was just talking last night how. Uh, actually, the people that have been hit the hardest um, are the younger people, because um, actually, younger people's lifestyle has been affected to a much greater extent than older people's lifestyle. You know, that ability to go out and be, you, you know, with with sort of abandon, effectively, with you know, to just be, you know, free of of thought and worry and all that type mm-hmm. of stuff, and. And, and, you know, not being able to go to the pub, not being able to go to your mate's house, not being able to, you know, go to parties, you know, go to gigs, etc. You know, obviously far more young people do that than older people. And I, I, people are saying, well, the young people won't get, um, younger people won't get vaccinated. And, and I'm saying, I think more of them will get vaccinated than older people because their lifestyle is buzzing for it. Yes, yeah. it kind of corroborates that, like, that there's, I've, I've heard, like, I've seen from different, various different sources that, People saying, you know, are you uh, are people like yourself and and a big event organizers? Are they not worried that like the public's gonna be like too concerned about their safety? And it's like, well, yeah, everyone's got safety concerns, but these people, ourselves included, will do anything to yeah. to get there. There is there is no concern from 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 me. No. Um, <laughs> I know if that event's going ahead, you guys have have done the the research and you've made sure that. You know, it's not going to have, like you say, it, it, as long as it doesn't have a negative, if it has a neutral or positive impact, great. As long as it doesn't have a negative effect on anything, get me there. Like, yeah, I'm, there's absolutely. no ex- concerns ex- from exactly. us. And, no, exactly. And, I, and, and you, know, as, you know, as you know, I'm not somebody that, you know, sits, you know, backstage you know, throughout the event in a, a little protected bubble. I've and, seen you, man. You know, I've, seen like you, uh, be... I've seen you, I've seen you exceeding the speed limit on your little buggy <laughs> in, the, in the back. We, we drove past you in our van as we were pulling into Leeds. And, oh um, God, oh and yeah, we, and also no, something that it... was, something that was really baller, something really cool. When we got to Reading, there was another buggy there, Melvin. I think it just had your name on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> this is Melvin's buggy. No one else touched yeah. this. That's that's cool. But, yeah, I know, it. but I mean, I spent I spent time in I spent time in the crowd. You know, I spent. We time saw in you the that crowd time. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, and it, but I we, do, of course, on the barrier. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. It was it was it was post Malone, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, post it was. Malone? Yeah, I, I I don't yeah, remember, but that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something that's um, something that's cool about that I imagine is cool is. Obviously, you have a quadruple A pass, right, to that <laughs> festival. You 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 run the show, so you can go anywhere. But you're not a, a megastar, so you can comfortably what like if Post Malone was trying to wander about, he'd obviously get papped everywhere. Whereas you kind of got the yeah. best of both worlds. You can go anywhere you want and experience everything. And obviously, it's a it's work for you. It's not like you're just chilling. But you kind of got that. It's just like the perfect balance of you can you can comfortably walk past that barrier and maybe only three or four groups of people will, will bother you. Us being one, <laughs> you're assuming that. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but do you know what I mean? It's kind of. No, I think I, that's I a agree. good balance. And I think I, I think it is a good balance. But you know, I guess what what I was going on to say is that I I, I won't be sort of staying away from crowds at Leeds Festival or Reading Festival or Latitude yeah. or anything. I, I'll be in the middle of it because I know that I would have created something that is, 
you know, as safe as going to the, the supermarket. That is the intention. Absolutely. Melvin, uh, I think we've reflected it enough there. Here's a, here's a question for you about crowds and about this, that, and the other. When was the last time you were in a crowd? And like, when, when was the last time you were, you know, who was, the, who was the last artist that you saw? What was the last gig you went to? Oh, Jesus. You know, I actually can't even remember. I think the last time I was in a crowd, uh, you know, I, I actually, I mean, really? it's, like, it's like so far away from yeah. me. I just can't, it's not in my head at all. Um, it would have been, it would have been in the spring of last year. Um, um, and it would have either been a gig or a football match. Um, oh, of course, uh, football. Yeah. So, it, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, I can do the prawn sandwich thing well, as long as it's a veg- vegetarian prawn, obviously. But I can do the prawn sandwich thing. But I can be in with the away boys as well. So um, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll bet I can I'll jump bet. up and down. Melvin's the, the, there with a the Millwall so. brick in hand. <laughs> the, the main question I'm thinking here, Melvin, is is, is, is what team are you supporting here? I'm, I'm assuming it's Tigers that Hull is it? Is Hull your team? Well, Hull City, Hull City are close to my heart, mm-hmm. but um, I'm afraid Man United are, oh, are, really? you know, rule my life. Yeah, yeah. The Red and, Devils. And, yeah. <laughs> A lot of people are tuning out now. Mate. You've lost. I know you've they lost are. Our view. I know they are. But hey, I can't. I can't pretend. You my know, dad was a pretend. was a diehard uh, Man United fan. He um, yeah. he loved them. Absolutely loved them. It's just you know. It's just. I mean, you know. I became a fan. You know, because of my dad, and you, you know, and 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 actually, all you know, the, the the five or six best mates that I started school with, that are still my best mates, we're all still United fans. We, you know, we were all United fans then, um, and you know, it just, you know, you're, you're definitely less likely to, uh, you know, as Nick Hornby said, you're definitely less likely to change your football team than to change your girlfriend or boyfriend. Absolutely, <laughs> I completely agree with that one. So. <laughs> I just support whoever's at the top of that list. <laughs> is, it, the list. is it Man- Manchester City? Man. Do you remember when Leeds got promoted and suddenly you became a Leeds fan again? I've always loved Leeds, mate. I've always loved Leeds. Yeah, Le- Leeds is a great city and it's a great football team, but it's not the one that I support. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, cool. So let's uh, let's go into a few kind of... Melvin, we, uh, we're very fortunate. You know, we've got a... We've got a a great following, a uh, really tight knit kind of community built around the content that we make. But um, with that comes responsibilities. Like I have been pretty much Ticketmaster customer support for the last uh, <laughs> for the last month. People think I work for Ticketmaster. Oh um, I've had emails, I've had messages on Instagram, and it's lovely that people, you know, I, I appreciate the being put on that pedestal. Um, I keep getting asked about second batch of tickets. Now I'm pretty sure that it's. It's been put out there that there is no more tickets. You guys sold out very quickly as soon as the festival going ahead was announced. Um, but can you confirm second batch of tickets? What, what, what's the what, where's your head out with tickets at the minute? Is it is it truly sold out? Is there going to be a capacity yeah, uplift as it as it goes? No, so, no, there isn't a ticket left. There isn't a single ticket left. Um, there isn't a day ticket left. There isn't a weekend ticket left. There isn't a day ticket for any other days. There's no second batch. Um, and it, it, it's terrible that, um, you know, people have missed out. Um, but there is a, uh, you know, there is a, a limit on the capacity. I'm not going to increase the capacity at any of the shows that I've got this year because, you, you know, I do also have to focus on, um, uh, you, you know, getting everything right in sort of COVID terms, as we've discussed. And, and um, you, you know, it, it it would be easy to say, oh, well, let's just get, you know, get a bigger capacity and get more people in and get more people in. And, but I, I just, I, I just want to, you know, we've, we've had the same capacity for quite a while and I want to focus on that and get it right for that, you know, for mm-hmm. that 85,000 yeah. people. So, so, so is it, it is the same capacity then, Melvin? It's not a reduced capacity. It's, you're aiming no, it's for not the a same. reduced, no, exactly the same. It's cool. exactly the same capacity it, as it was I in guess, 2019. Is your head at, let's get an event like it was, like it was before, let's do it. And then la- let's get the ball ro- rolling again. Um, are you, are you... Yeah, there's a there's an element of that. I mean, there is an element of that, but it, it isn't that. It, it, it's you know, obviously, the more people, the more complicated. And, and, and people might say, well, if it's only another five thousand, it isn't more complicated. And, and to a large extent, they're right. But I just don't want to add anything more um, to um, you know what what is obviously going to be a challenging year in terms yeah, yeah. of I guess um, yeah. you, you know making. 
you know, testing everybody and or, or checking everybody's been, va- you know, vaccinated, etc. It, it, it's exciting to think about like, okay, cool. So we aim for that base level in 2021. You know, you, you have a se- you've got a sell out Reading and Leeds. What can that look like in a year, in two years, when, you know, everyone is safe and hopefully this is a, all a complete thing of the past and... You know, is there going to be like double the demand for tickets next year? Like, it's it's an it's. I know you you may not have an answer for that, but it's it's just an interesting thought experiment, really. Like, where can now we've all missed out on on a on a well two years worth of festivals, pretty much. What does that look like in in two years time? Is there going to be so much demand because we all know what we've kind of missed out on? Is there going to be more mm. Glastonbury sized events going on? I don't know. Just riffing. I, I don't know exactly, and it, it, it's worth that thought, but I, we, we just don't know at this point in time, and that, that's the honest truth about it. We don't know, um, 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 you, you, you know. Um, just sort of dealing with what's in front of you right now, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's, you, you know, that, all you can that's do. basically, yeah. Um, I mean, you, you know, it is, it is, and, you, you know, we, 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 we don't know as... Um, you know, we, we, and you don't know from, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, from year to year and, you know, so, um, uh, you know, but I mean, I, I do think people, I do think people are big, genuinely going to appreciate every minute of things yeah. that they used to oh, take for granted too right, mate. Too um, right. in a way that they didn't we, you know we, um, we as a we as a collective commonly talk about how we have great experiences we, you know we, we go to we go to a lot of festivals we go we we travel a lot obviously this year a lot of the things that we enjoy have been shut down but we commonly talk about like trying to live so much in the moment that like you you're almost like i want to remember this more now um, yeah. So I, yeah. I think this <laughs> this coming year, there's going to be a lot of, hold on, I'm just trying I'm to just really enjoy this, in this moment. I just really want to live in it for a minute. <laughs> um, how how does it make you feel having a sellout event then this year? Um, and yeah, what, When was the last time Leeds sold out as a weekend? It, it, um, I, you know, I don't know, but I mean, we've pretty much had sellouts in 17, 18 and 19 to be fair. Oh, really? Um, yeah, we did. Pre- well, we, we, we very much had sellouts in 18, 19, 17, 18, 19, because I think we had, uh, was it Red Hot Chili Peppers, M&M and Foo Fighters um, in each of those mm. years. And we, yeah. you know, we had really strong day tickets. That M&M day was um, great. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we had, we had really strong day tickets um, for all, all three days of each of those years. Um, um, and so we did, we probably did less camping t- tickets mm. um, compared to day tickets because yeah, you've yeah. got to work the two cumulatively for the, the total capacity. You know, this year I've done probably more well i have done more camping tickets and a few less day tickets yeah you best get there early then <laughs> yeah that's what he's saying the does, camp it, set up. does it inspire you with confidence then that the that the general public like there is a they've voted it, with the wallets haven't they they've yeah. voted with the wallets <laughs> we're ready to go yeah does it inspire you with confidence that the appetite is is definitely there and things are looking very positive yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's, I don't know, if, I mean, it, I, I think it validates, I don't know so much about, it inspires me with confidence. I think it, what it really does is validate my belief that festivals in particular are such a an important part of our culture. Um, I think it validates that point um, for me. And, 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 and of course, they, they, they weren't, you know, in the mid 80s, in the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, they weren't anything like as embedded in, in our culture as they are now. Mm. But they are now 100% part and parcel of our culture. And I think what it does more than anything, not just for me, but I think for, you know, for public authorities as well, um, I think it, it just, it, it validates that this is something that they have to take seriously rather than treat as an irritant. Mm. Um, and, you know, some public authorities, and I, I, this is definitely not the case for Leeds, are all read in, but, you know, some public authorities sort of wish the festival didn't, you know, a festival didn't exist. It's like a pain now for them. Now we just get in. It's, a, it, it's extra work. It's a bit of a pain. And now all the public authorities are, are all saying, 
we just want you to be back. We want you to be back. It's we realize actually, although it's hard work, we we actually really like working on it. Amazing. Obviously, there's the there's, the there's, it's sold out, which is great. People want to go. Um, going off that, is will there be any less acts on the lineup, or you know, has it been really hard to try get? get acts, you know, certainly from overseas countries, you know, America and things like that. Has it been difficult trying to, um, you know, rebook or, you know, book in general? Well, I, mean, I think we, 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 you know, we, you know, obviously when, you, when you're trying to book a lineup for a festival, you, you know, there's lots of circumstances around that, you, you know, that you have to take into account. Um, and, 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 and act availability, of course, is, is one of the, the most important ones, really. Um, and, um, it, it, you know, we, I, I think it's fair to say that we, we did look at it early on mm-hmm. and, and, and say, look, it, you know, if there are sufficient British acts available that we consider to be, you know, of the right value to us and, you know, say the right things about the festival, then, mm-hmm. you know, we should focus on them Absolutely, as much yeah. as we can in order to ensure that there's more likelihood that, that they'll, be, um, still they'll be, be able, able to, to attend. Be yeah. yeah. Um, and so we, you, there's no question that we did that. And I think that um, that has paid dividends for us. And, you, you know, but I mean, the, the American, you know, there's a number of American acts and I guess the two that, you know, spring to mind, you, you know, Post Malone and, um, you know, Queens of the Stone Age. I mean, they're, they've been pretty unequivocal to us is that, um, and it, it, it's sort of similar to what you guys are saying is, um, if you tell us it's safe, Melvin, we're coming. Yeah. Absolutely, um, and uh, you, you know, even if it, 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 it even if it's a, a, a fly-in, what we describe as a fly-in, because in, in general, you, you know, American acts, um, but you know, all acts, you, you know, the, you know, the acts get on the stage and want to give the best performance that they can give. Um, you know, and as great as the bands are, they don't want to do that without a decent bit of rehearsal. Um, and you know, making sure they've got the right guitar techs and front of house engineers, et cetera, et cetera, the ones that they work with all the time. Mm. That all costs money, and you know, in in that it does cost money. They, um, they, you know, and that costs a lot of money up front to get, you know, to pay for the rehearsals, all that sort of stuff. And the way they look at it is that, you know, obviously, if there's fifty people in a touring party, even if there's only, um, you know, four people in the band, sometimes there might be thirty. Sometimes there's well over 100 people in the touring party, you know, for some of the headliners. Um, they've all got to be costed up. And then they, you know, if they play a, a UK festival or a couple of UFest- UK festivals, Leeds and Reading, then they might play something in Europe or, you know, four or five different other European territories. And they spread the cost of putting all their rehearsals together in all of that. Obviously, that's what they do. Of course. Uh, it, 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 I mean, at the moment, mainland Europe appears to be less likely to have festivals than, um, you, you know, than the UK. That may change, but that's how it appears at the minute. And therefore, a lot of American acts are going to say, actually, we can't afford to come in to just do one show. Mm. Um, because economically, it's not great for them to do that, particularly lower down the bill. Mm. So, um, you know, we anticipated that. And that's why we, you know, we've tried to focus on a, on a, on British acts um, as much as we can, because we want to be able to try and deliver on what we're, you know, what we're advertising in that sense of it as best as we can. And I think we will. And I say, you know, post and, 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 um, you know, Queens of the Stone Age, for example, have just been very clear in the same way that the fans are very clear. Tell us it's safe and we're coming. Absolutely. One, I'm going to say the B word here, because I know, you know, quite a few years ago now, it seems that Brexit was a massive thing on people's lips and people were worried about, obviously, the, the industry and obviously getting it overseas banned. Has that had any, you know, have we seen any effect We of kind that? of forgot about that, didn't yeah, we? Like, it's absolutely. almost like this has kind of taken... Yeah, you know, it's all been COVID, but actually, you know, throughout all this, you know, Brexit actually happened. And I remember when I was doing that dissertation we were talking about, um, that, that was kind of a big factor I had to talk about. And just because there was just so much uncertainty about um, about what, what it was going to mean for for the music industry, you know, overseas bands coming over. So has has that been, you know, has have we seen any effect of that? We, we, we've, we've, 
we haven't seen any effect of it yet in the sense of it because no bands are touring awesome. nobody's nobody's working at the moment but uh, th- there's definitely concern a hundred percent concern um and and again it was important that we you know bore that in mind when we were booking Leeds and Reading um but um you, you know there there is you know huge concern um and it's fair to say um you know there's piles of us working away with government trying to work out the implications of Brexit on touring artists um and that isn't that that isn't just for us I mean I, I, I not ironically but um you know people may or may not appreciate that actually for um it, for orchestras um it, it, it it's probably even worse because um you, you know there's you know 40 or 50 of them in each orchestra um and um you you know and they you know they do the same as we do they the same as in our industry that you know they they earn their income via live performance um so and and then equally for you know for mainland european um you know opera singers and and um you you know orchestras etc they've got the the flip trying to come back in and so it's a worry. We're trying to work it out. We don't think it's going to be the thing that is uh, making things totally impossible, but it certainly means that it's more, it's tricky. And that ability to just get on a, get on a, on a ferry in Hull and go over to, um, you know, Rotterdam to play Leeds and get on a ferry in Hull, go over to Rotterdam and then go and play something in, 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 in Northern Europe they might need to build a day extra in to do all mm. the sort of customs and all that in a way that they didn't before. One thing after another, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thing after another. It is, yeah. It's, some, it's something I, I worry about, being in a band that I won't reference here, <laughs> but like... But it's 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 now the now the additional thing of like oh so now now we have to think think about actually v you know is is there a concern about visas and is there a, is there a concern about would we be able to play one day one day after the other uh, so I totally get where where you're coming from um I want to I want to talk about the so see so we've, we've got two two main stages this year is that still planning to to go ahead yeah that's a really interesting point that yeah yeah it is yeah it it, it is and, you, you've done this um, before right uh, someone someone told me that that's been done before in the past or is it not well in, in fairness the the uh, the original reading festival used to be two main stages but they were they were next to each other and you sort of shuffled from <laughs> left you know, to right so, yeah. there's, yeah. so there's no there's no kind of waiting and changeover no, in that sense of it, but and and actually, there's a, a big German metal festival um, called Wacken Festival. Oh, yeah. um, that happens. Is that in where they're, they're, is that where they're both facing each other or something? I, I don't know if I'm. No, they 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 they're, they're next to each oh, other. They're, they're still other. next to each other. Um, uh, and, um, 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 but then you, you know, I have a festival in Berlin called Lollapalooza. Um, you know, Lollapalooza Berlin. I, I use two main stages there. Hmm. Um, and um, it works really, really well. And what it means is that, um, it, you know, what it means is that we can uh, we can attract what would be in effect six headliners um, I- I- instead of only three headliners. That's really the uh, the essence around it. And um, y- you know, we wanted to explore that and look at that and see whether it works. I think it does. Um, well, yeah, Melvin, um, you, you, you sold out, so <laughs> you, you, yeah. you can't say it didn't. <laughs> uh, no, so you, you know, it, it, I, I, I do think it does in that sense of it. Really, you know, you, 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 you know, we have six headliners. That's There's the six, reality of six it. Six true headliners as well. Like you can't really split hairs and, and say like, well, one is the headliner, one's not. Like you've got some massive, massive names across all six mm. of those headliners. It, Exactly, and that you know that that was, and you know we we actually looked at it um, in twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen, and I just wasn't ready to to make the change. But uh, you, you know the the, the COVID um, year off just gave me more time to think about it, and and you know I, I'm definitely not somebody that's opposed to change, but I like to make the change when I'm, I'm convinced it's the right thing, and it feels like it's the right thing, really. No clashes either. Get, 
No, no, no. And again, you know, we've done well on that. John's done well on that, really. In terms is that what is that John's uh, John's kind of responsibility? Well, John, Lee, yeah, John, John, yeah, yeah, John leads on that. Of course, he does. Yeah. So, um, Melvin, I, I wish, yeah. I wish, I wish you. I almost wish it wasn't so, sold out because I, I feel like would would be great convincing people now about how gr- great value for money it is <laughs> getting six headliners ra- rather rather than just the usual three or like. Uh, just one, one main stage. Let me yeah. tell you, so I, are you, sixty quid for a are you suggesting I, <laughs> Are you suggesting I should? Are you suggesting I should? Have, should it be charging more? I, I, I will. I will. I will uh, <laughs> leave, leave that up to <laughs> the people. <laughs> yeah. Um, we joke. No, we joke about is, that. It is exactly that. It's great value for money. Actually, it is exactly that. Melvin, who's your who's your favourite act currently on the on the current lineup? Who are you looking forward to seeing most? Gosh, where do I don't know? I mean, I, I mean, it would have been Rage I, I think, Against the Machine, Charlie. <laughs> it, it would have been. It would have been if we were talking this time last year, of course. But oh. I, I, I think probably if I'm going to choose one, I, I'm going to choose Stormzy. Really? Um, yeah, I, I am. I'm going to choose Stormzy because he's homegrown and he came through one extra. You, you know, he's headlined wireless. Um, it's certainly it, going to mean you know, something it, that. Yeah, and it represents it represents a statement about you know British music culture. Um, it, you know that I think is an incredible statement that um, you know Stormzy is headlining Leeds and Reading. I think it's uh, um, I, I think it's phenomenal. I mean, he's a is an incredible artist. He's an incredible you know voice on society. He's got great you know perception of. Um, you know what society should be and how we should be as a society, etc. So if I'm going to choose one, I'm going to choose Stormzy um, uh, because I adore what the guy's done. I just think he's is incredible. Um, he's absolutely stepped up um, out of a genre that everybody wanted to stop. When I say everybody, you know, public authorities, etc. Yeah. You, you know, um, and you know, he's become. You know, he's despite everything that was was in front of him in terms of or in front of that genre um, of people trying to say it it didn't have validity. It's very clear it has validity. I always believed it did, which is why I brought in the one extra stage right from those, you know, from that right. early days. Um, and, and this validates that. It's so for me, he's top of the tree. We um, with our schedule and uh, coming down to Reading. For a, for a whole night, um, it actually works out that that's the day we catch twice. So we'll be oh, seeing okay. we'll be seeing Stormzy twice. Um, fantastic. Which is <laughs> uh, he's actually the only one out of the headliners I've actually never I've seen, seen before. Yeah. So so I'm happy with that. And, oh, uh, really? and is it is it Catfish on that same night? Um, it is, which it we is. we you know we, we love. We love. Uh, it, they really had to. I really had to try <laughs> to love Catfish, but then once I'd kind of got. Once I kind of understood them a bit in my head, yeah, I yeah. absolutely love them. Like, we've had some, we've been to loads times. of catfish Great. gigs, yeah. big Our, ones, small ones, we, some as big as your head. We did a, a, a video, um, 20, 2019. <laughs> we, we did a video, guys. I didn't know if you know. Uh, we did a video in, in twenty nineteen. I think it was like uh, it was just a questions one where people sent in some some questions to us, and they asked us um, who do we think is going to be headlining in a few years' time. And I remember we said Catfish in the Bottom and we're going to be a headline, and lo and behold, they are. Um, oh, there you go. You're you're ahead of the curve. Melvin, we watch we, we your content. <laughs> yeah, he's been. You, you've said you saw that video. and You're like, right, right, these, these, guys, these guys know what they're talking about. Melvin, do you do you meet most of these people in person? Then most of the apps. Yeah, like some of the some of the kind of you know, have you met Storms? That's what that's what we've called yeah, them as friends. I've, yeah, Storms. Of course. I've, yeah, I've met, I've, yeah, I've, I've met Stormzy, but you, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like an old granddad to Stormzy. You know, so um, <laughs> you, you know, in that sense of it, I, you know, I, 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 I don't meet them all. I meet some of them, but you know, really, they're they're not here. They don't come to the festival to to meet me. You're obviously. joking. They, you You're know, joking. They come, they they come to the festival yeah, to play. And so, I, you know, I, 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 in truth, I would spend more time with their managers and their agents. <laughs> um, um, and, you know, as I say, the... Um, the, the, you know, the more polite among them would actually say hello to me, but um, in, in that we're talking about rock and roll, most of them don't give a fuck. Well, I hope, I, our, frankly, I hope our friend so. Simon from Biffy Clyro was nice and polite to you. <laughs> yeah. well, well, Simon is, is, Simon, all three of them actually 
are beyond gentlemen. They Absolutely. are just brilliant, brilliant examples of what young men can we, be. Uh, we've, we've been fortunate enough to meet them on a, on a number of times. They're my favourite band, Jake's favourite band, They're one of Raz's favourite bands. Incredible, aren't they? They're so, they are such decent human we beings have, as well as such a great band. Yeah, we, we have... T- they, uh, I don't know if you saw the... They were doing a, meant to be doing a tour in April in small venues, um, little academies, which is a, a... You know, they obviously do arenas and festivals mm. normally. Yeah. Um, we've got tickets to every date of that show. Um, have you we really? Fantastic. Adore them. He, oh man, I could talk about. We could do a Biffy Clyro episode. <laughs> Absolutely, I love them. I love them. You should get Simon on. I'm sure Simon we, well, would be happy to we've, get on. We've actually. just we've just actually compiled a list of people to reach out to and their management Fantastic. and their their leads. But Simon does strike me as the guy who would jump on, and I and I feel we could have a really um, just honest and true conversation because we yeah, but. That's that's to come. Yeah, I mean they've. Yeah, I mean Biffy again. Biffy have got really good, sort of normal and decent manager and agent. It's really nice actually that uh, you, you know they've got a, a really good setup. They always really, strike really me good. as as a bit of an underdog as well, and I don't know why, but they've really grafted through the years. I think they've played every single stage at Tea in the Park, maybe even at Reading and Leeds. Um, Radio One Extra, and maybe not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every doing the cover of what? Of course, sense. yeah, of course. Um, but but they, but they thing. always like, even though they're a festival headliner, I've, I very rarely meet people. I mean, us three <laughs> love them, but <laughs> I don't really meet people that adore and that it, like. They, they always strike me as kind of an underdog, and I, that's why I think yeah, I just I mean, love they, them they, even they, more. They, their first their first gig, I think, was at the uh, um, uh, not their first gig, but they sent me their first. Festival play uh, uh, was um, read in what was I think the old Carlsberg stage, mm-hmm. um, and um, you, you, you know if if you get to chat to them, um, ask them about how excited they were to climb the stairs <laughs> of that stage, and it was it was the Carlsberg stage, it was a little stage, and um, uh, so you, you know, but they drove down through the night from Glasgow to get down there and everything, and. Uh, yeah, they, they, you know, they've told me the story of of how they felt as they were climbing the stairs. It's a, it's a terrific story. And now they're up, you know, on these lineup. I don't want to talk too much about Biffy, but I obviously love them. Um, they're on the lineup <laughs> at Download next to Kiss and Iron Maiden. It's like that's it, boys. You're a yeah. moment, you're rock royalty now. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's <laughs> we'll, we'll draw a line at Biffy. <laughs> I'll have, you, Mel- I'll have your ear off, Melvin, with Biffy Clara. <laughs> Melvin, um, we, we, we reached out to um, so, some of our, 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 our community, let's call them, on, on, on uh, was, it, was it on Instagram? And we, we asked for, for a few questions that they might, they might have for yourself. One of them, um, which is relevant to the point that, that you were making earlier, um, around, around having acts like Stormzy and Rage Against the Machine and all these different variety of, of, of acts. Um, somebody, somebody asks, like, what is Reading and Leeds Festival? Is it rock? Is it pop? Is it indie? Like, how, how would you best describe it? I would describe it as relevant. <laughs> Mic <Yeah>. drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, makes yeah, sense. I, I would agree with that. It's rock and roll as well. Like, rock and roll has an attitude in, as opposed to a genre. Do you know what I mean? Mm? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's... It's it, it. I mean, ultimately, all festivals have to be relevant to their sort of constituent audience. That's what. Um, and you know, obviously, you know, Reading, um, and to a lesser extent, Leeds, um, you know, started off as as about guitar bands, really. Mm-hmm. And um, you, you know, but both have always, you know, from the emergence of hip hop out of the US, you know, both festivals have always sort of. Um, you know, championed hip hop as it was then, and and when Jay Z um, was on the lineup, Jay Z was at Reading and Leeds. One of you like yeah, years that, ago, he was actually he was yeah. and not he even was, headlining. How mad is that? <laughs> He's no, literally no, no, no. one of the biggest <laughs> titans of industry. So, um, so it, it, I, I, I've always just had the single reference point of relevance because um, uh, that's actually it, it has to be a relevant festival and. Um, you know, relevant to what is exciting uh, the audience, exciting young people at the time, really. Can't say more than that, can you? No, so. no, no. 
<laughs> irrelevant festival. <laughs> yeah, just, I, I think, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's just it's, like fingers it, up, turning hair. Yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's what, some, we, we're just relevant. Don't yeah, you worry about it. We're yeah. just relevant. Who we rock, who we're this, that. Uh, yeah, we're just, we're just, we're just, we're just here and now is what we are. Man. We live in the moment, man. We don't try and put a label on it. I mean, don't worry about it. We, we're a sold out festival, so it don't matter what we are at the end of the day. <laughs> sold out is what we are. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Melvin, let's talk about something like super important and probably on on everyone's minds more so and more so as as the weeks and months and years go on. Um, kind of representation at the festival, um, female representation is always a big talking point for the right reasons, um, and we know that that you have the Rebalance program. Um, tell anyone that might not know about that about it because it's better coming from you than from us, of course. Well, I, I mean, I guess... The, uh... and, where's, and, and just generally, like, I know that's a bit of a vague question I've kind of asked there. So what, what's, where, where's your head at? What, what work's being done to not only get more females on the lineup, but at the grassroots level, get more, get more girls in bands making music with equal opportunities? What, tell us a bit about that. Well, I, I guess... I guess in a way, you know, where I've got to start is 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 is, is, is referencing the fact that what I am is a live music promoter, um, and um, I, I'm not really well. I'm not involved in in the recording industry or indeed in the uh, the broadcast world of music in that sense of it. And the broadcast world used to be just the BBC, but of course now it's it's Spotify and Apple Music and Amazon Music, etc. There's you know any number of the uh, you know platforms um, uh, that you know that broadcast you know in one way or the other, albeit some of them uh, you, you know you self choose uh, in that sense of it. Um, and so I, I'm a live music promoter, and, and what I have to put on the stage is what the audiences are listening to. Um, and the truth of it is, the audiences are mainly listening to, or have been mainly listening to, male bands, male fronted artists, male artists, etc. Um, uh, and and um, it, you know, and, and and some of that is because. Actually, a good deal of it is because of what is played on radio stations, um, and in particular, what is recorded um, and what's written. And so, you, you know, I think every year, you know, in excess of eighty-five, ninety percent of the published music um, every year is from men. Every year, the um, it, you know the, the you know the top you know, thousand um, songs, you know, 85% will be men, um, you, you know, that are played on radio stations, you know, around the world, et cetera. Um, and, 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 and that obviously influences, you know, if you're driving along and, you know, listening to, you know, the radio or, you know, whatever, and, and what you're listening to is, is what you get used to, what you like, or you choose to listen to that station because that's what you want to listen to. Um, that's then also what you want to go and see. And so to, to a very large extent, I reflect that. Uh, what I, and, 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 the reality is the, 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 the pipeline of, you know, women or the, the, the number of women available uh, to, you know, headline and, and or perform it is just factually less than men. There's yeah. just less acts. Um, and the last thing that you have to do, need to do, is put a, uh, a, a, a female act, a woman, um, you know, band, a female band, um, on a stage where they're there because of a gender balance, because people will walk away, they yeah. don't want to watch them. If they, if and, and that would destroy their careers. They need that to be would there really on, damage on the right, them on the basis of, of, of the music. Yeah, you know, all, yeah. All the and 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 so what I've been trying to do is get um, is, is get the um, you know is get more young women into a recording studio to um, record 
what is their first proper EP? Um, and, uh, you know, I've been working very closely with the, the PRS Foundation, the Performance Rights Society Foundation, about selecting those acts. And, and what, you know, what I do is, and, and, and this is a, an element of the problem. I mean, when I first started this, the, the number of women studio engineers, um, you know, was less than 20 um, in the entire country. Um, and so it, 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 even if you were there as a, as a you know, as a, a female band or a female artist in your own right, you know, you could very easily have had a, you know, sexist male engineer that is like, oh, why am I having to do this type of stuff? And, and it just wasn't working, you know. And so I, I, and I'm not saying all engineers are sexist, of course I'm not, you know, but, but, I get what you, the I whole get environment yeah, the, and the you, you, you know that yeah and and so um uh, um it, 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 you know I I was um uh, it, it, you know thought well I, actually what we really need to do is increase the pipeline um of young women that are, are given the opportunity to record music and um and, and that's what I started to do and I called it rebalance and I, I give a band uh, a week in a recording studio in Leeds um and um uh, y- y- you know they they uh, I pay all their expenses I pay their accommodation I pay for the studio time I pay for the um you know the engineer etc cetera, etc cetera. I pay for and, and and we only we give them all female engineers in fact the prs pay for the engineer and source the engineer that's cool um uh you know but i pay for their travel i pay for their accommodation i pay for their food so that they get a week in a professional studio um with a professional engineer to create their first ep and then uh and then i you know they that that and and it gives them that chance but i'm not a record producer i'm not a a, a record label so i can't take them any further in terms of you know a label or anything like that but i also give them a chance then to play at least at one of my festivals at least if not more and so i I think we have to focus on that we have to focus on that um that developing of young talent so that we can get them coming up the ranks in the same way that Storms has come up the ranks, that Biffy's come up the ranks, etc., mm. etc. Et we, you, you know, we have to get to a point where you, you know those young women are coming up the ranks. And um, there's, there's been some uh, great again, examples of that on on the lineups before. You know, I think of Billy. She um, she absolutely filled that stage, man. She that was the busiest I've ever seen a Leeds Fest crowd. Was, yeah, and Dua Lipa was next level. I think. I, we were quite close to the front for that, mm. so that you know the, it it does exist and it's there. I guess it I guess it's just the the percentage in it. It's, it must be very hard. It to, is, but I, I I would also ask, and I, I you know I would also ask, and I think it is something that, um, and 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 I ask this of, I ask this of my marketing team, um, and and it, it wasn't a complicated question, but it was like. And, you know, I have a decent sized marketing team, the majority of which are women. Um, and I have a decent sized marketing team. And there was a point a number of years ago where I asked them all to actually look at their Spotify playlist and look how many women were in their top 10 or their top 20 of their Spotify playlist. And they were shocked at how few women they were listening to. And they were people that were saying to me, we need more women on the stage. Of course they were. Um, and, and, and I agree. I'm 100% behind that. So, and I, I would invite, you, you know, you guys, um, I'd invite, you, you know, your listeners in that sense, you know, examine what you're listening to um, uh, and, and, and see how, uh, you know, genre represented it really is. That's a really, yeah. that's a really good point. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah quite right, right. So everyone listening to this has now got an action <laughs> to look at their Apple Music and Spotify. Uh, I'll tell you what, just to kind of um, just switch on a tangent now, I just will open my Apple Music to have a look. Mm. Um, someone I've been listening to loads of, not not female. Someone that's really caught me off guard with how good they are, Melvin, is bloody Robbie Williams, <laughs> right? I am. Um, 
I, shall we? Shall we? Shall we end this? Shall we end <laughs> that it was, now? That was I great. Acti- <laughs> Listen to that. I accidentally put a Robbie Williams song on on my speaker at home, and it just plays like more songs by the artist once one's been played. Why are we talking about Robbie Williams? <laughs> He's amazing. Anyway, I'll sh- I'm, re- I'm just I'm a bit late to this Robbie Williams party, but I'm a, I'm <laughs> kind of like a middle aged so mum at this point. Are you are you are you making a a, a play for more <laughs> older artists to be at Leeds? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, if Robbie was there as a secret set, I'd, I'd be there, I'd be singing Angels. I mean, go, going off this reaction, I'm afraid to say, Rob, I don't think Robbie is going to be the I don't know why set. I'm talking about Robbie Williams <laughs> with Melvin Ben. No, I mean, Robbie's, Robbie's fantastic and he is fantastic, but I'm not sure Leeds and Reading are the right location. Is, is he relevant? Yeah, Let me ask question. you that, mate. He's at 15 or so, number. Um, he's second to only Had. Elvis Presley Had. and the Beatles in terms of number one. Anyway, I've been reading the wiki article. Mel- um, Melvin. <laughs> just shut me up, Russ, all right? <laughs> yeah, gladly. Melvin, um... We want, we want to run through some super, super quick, quick fire questions because I, I appreciate you're a busy man and we're, we're running out of time. So we're going we're gonna to run through a few and, and just answer them as concisely, I guess, as, as you can. So we'll start. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, uh, yeah we'll, I'll try. <laughs> we'll, we'll start with uh, your favourite act of all time at Leeds and Reading. Or just any of the festivals that you put on, actually. <laughs> I, again, I don't do favourites of all time because I think the best is yet to come. Um, <laughs> nice. And I think if I, I think if I was to say, if you put that, a lid on it, then you're going to stop searching, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and I'm absolutely of the opinion that music has got better. Um, cool. So love that. You, you must have a a, a, a fair. Uh, you must have a favourite artist or someone who you who, who is a strong favourite recently. Yeah, who are you listening to at the minute, mate? Who's top of your Spotify? <laughs> um, again, I'm not going to go into that because I don't want to be. I don't, I'm not going to say this. All is, right, you know, all right. Because if I say enough. that, then if I say that, you're going to say, "Are they going to play?" <laughs> um, and so, it's Robbie um, I, <laughs> <laughs> in sp- speaking of people that 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 might not play, then is there is there an artist or, or a band that you've that you know I know. Downloads very renowned for trying to book Van Halen or something like that, but it's just obviously not gonna not happen. Is there a band or artist that you've tried to book on various occasions and it's just not happened? There isn't a single artist that is relevant to Leeds and Reading Festival that uh, is around at the moment that hasn't played. Well, I suppose, um, I suppose that's it. That's, that's a good feeling to have. Yeah. Centered. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's you know, there's up and coming acts mm-hmm. that are completely relevant that haven't played yet. Um, but in terms of established acts, that there are none that haven't played. There are none that we think to ourselves they got away mm-hmm. with missed our chance. None it's a good point. I can't think of any. Like, if I'm no. just running through my head now, what like I, I, there's no one I can think of that like they should have had their shot. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, we all yeah. it's a cinema. Melvin, uh, you can't say us for this one, but who's the coolest uh, person or artist or whoever that you've ever worked with? Who, <laughs> and you can't who, say us. Yeah, yeah, by the way. <laughs> who's like the epitome um, of cool to you that you've worked with? I mean, there's, you know, where do you start? Do you start with Eminem? Do you start with... Yeah, Dave you do. You start, you start and end <laughs> yeah. with Eminem, Melvin. God. You know, I mean, it, 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 you know, it, it, I... I mean, you know, where do you go? Do you go Tom York? You know, do you go... Wow. Stop this, man. You know, do you go, you know, you know, the Arctic Monkeys? Where do you, you know, where do you, do you, I mean, it's like, it's, it's an impossible question to ask because these people are... Uh, and the list is endless. I mean, it yeah, is endless. Post Malone, you know, it's like... <laughs> Literally you, listed you know, all my favourite, the, all my idols here. <laughs> it's like... And, uh, you know, you've got to be, I, I think you've got to be brave to be in a band and put yourself out there because you're, you're standing in front of people night after night after night and, and that, that represents a coolness to me in itself regardless of what, who they are. I really. absolutely agree. I certainly can't do that. You know, I've played instruments now for over a decade. I couldn't imagine having the confidence to stand in front of an audience of any size and play. Um, yeah. so I totally agree. I think it's, there's a coolness to, to just yeah, the, absolutely. just the kind of 
idea of it. Yeah. Uh, Melvin, have you ever used a long drop, mate? <laughs> I have. Yeah. He's a fair man play. of the people. Yeah, fair play, man. <laughs> um, anyone, anyone? Let's go for a couple more. <laughs> uh, uh, who do you think that anyone needs to keep an eye on? Um, anyone? Anyone that you think so? So that, that might be a headliner for next for next year. Not you saying that they will be, but like anyone that you think might rise to that top level in the coming years. Who's the Who's the Who's the cream of the crop rising to the top? Um, I, I mean, if I was to go in a couple of different directions, um, I, I, you know, I'd say, um, I'd say AJ Tracy is pretty special. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, he had a uh, massive crowd I, as well. That yeah, was insane. Yeah. Oh my I, God. I, I, you know, I, uh, and I'd, I, you know, I'd, I'm going to say they're not on the lineup, but, you know, idols, I think, are a pretty special outfit at the minute. Oh, um, and, yeah. and doing the best. And pretty special, pretty special live, actually. That's the... I don't think we've um, ever seen them, I don't think. No, that you know, they, they don't they don't kind of tick my box, but I know they've got But maybe following. if they were on, you know, next lineup or something like that, we might, be, you know, get the opportunity to go see them, you know? Yeah, well, <laughs> you never know. I mean, and again, I'm, you know, we're not... I'm not suggesting they're going to play or anything of like course, that. Of course, of course. It's just a, a personal opinion. Just a conversation, and we're not, we're not yeah. reeling anything. I think I've got two or three more questions for you, Malvin. Um, any more uh, Festival Republic festivals likely to go ahead this year at all? Uh, yes. Um, uh, yes. Um, uh, not... Um, a, 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 just put on sale with um, a, a new partner, um, a, a festival on Clapham Common, um, uh, which is actually the same weekend as Leeds and Reading, uh, called Return to Dance. Um, Chase and Status are doing that. Oh, and, nice! Uh, one or two others. Um, Chase and Status are class. And I'm going to, and I'm going to try and add a couple of other. Um, You're busy that weekend, uh, then. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to go to Leeds, yeah, Reading, gonna... and that? Are you going to are you going to switch sites? At yeah, all? yeah. Oh my, oh my yeah, God, yeah, Melvin. Yeah, yeah. What you feel yeah, for once? So... <laughs> You've been working hard for the past year, and then and then and then you make this great decision, mate, to go. Yeah, and I'm going to do three festivals in one weekend. Are you mad? Yeah. Yeah. Um, any uh, any clues on the secret set for this year at Leeds and Reading? Is there going to is there going to be one? Can you say yes or no? Any clues at all? Uh. They will have played before. Ooh. Right. There may be a three-piece <laughs> from Scotland. <laughs> uh, and I think, I think final question um, to, to close off. Um, people, are, people have got a lot of energy saved up. They want, they want to let off a lot of steam this year. Um, any advice that you, that you would give any, to anyone attending Leeds and Reading this year or any advice for any return customers, let's people, say? People want to let off steam in a lot of different ways and we've kind of, we've seen that from our community. There's all different ways people yeah, can let off steam. Yeah, I guess, I guess the single, I mean, uh, you, you know, and, and you, you know, if, uh, and I, I don't want to sound like an old granddad or an old parent, but, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, just be careful with drugs, really, um, and because there will be people out there trying to take advantage, uh, selling you stuff that may not be good for you, and just be careful with drugs, really. And I mean, be t be careful with alcohol, but you know, in the main, you know, if you drink beer, it doesn't matter how much of it you drink, you're not going to die. Is that no. is that right? Okay, <laughs> that sounds like a challenge, Mister Ben. Um, but so that you, you know, and I, and I, I don't want to sort of end on a somber note, but that you know that uh, you, you know I, there's going to be a lot of unscrupulous people out there, um, you, you know, trying to take advantage of, of of the enthusiasm. The the absolute I can't imagine a greater high than being just at a festival sober watching a gig. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, what? How, how can you possibly need more than that in your life? Yeah, I will be. I mean, I'll be leathered. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be. Uh, get, I'll be a few few cans in by the time I hit the gate. I'm sure. <laughs> I hope so, at least. Oh, cool. Well, anything, anything you want to, anything you want to add, Melvin? We appreciate we've run over a little. No, I think just it's it's as always. It's a delight to chat to you guys. It's yeah, really we, nice actually, and um, uh, yeah, I wish you well. I, I'm interested to know how much 
You're getting from Greg's, though, if you could let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, we actually live above a Greg's, so they should probably cut us a deal because yeah. we have a Greg's on camera like 90% of the time. <laughs> we do. Um, I'm a big fan I mean, of a latte. Come on, you should at least be getting the uh, the free vegan sausage uh, vegan sausage rolls. You know we, what? They're the... they're better than the than the actual sausage rolls because they've got a bit of well, seasoning. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I've never had one of their sausage rolls because I don't eat meat. But the vegan sausage rolls and at a pound. Yeah, Jesus, I'll, I'll tell you what, wrong. Melvin. That's question for deal. you: How much are Greg's paying you? <laughs> <laughs> We will. Good question. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> we will leave it at that. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, subscribe down below. Red and Leeds set to go ahead. Is August going bank ahead. holiday weekend. Uh, you better believe that we will be there. We will have lots of content coming for you, Melvin. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We could chat to you wonderful. all day. Um, look forward to the next time. And yeah, me too. We'll see you soon, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.